Okay, so this video is going to be about how do you deal with the anger uh, after a relationship with a BPD or an MPD? Uh, this is regardless of whether you have been discarded or whether you discarded the narcissist or the borderline. So how do you deal with these feelings of anger, rage, and you know disgust and uh, uh, these uh, all these emotions that you have when you are finally, uh, let's say, broken up with this person? So the first thing to say is that uh, I don't think that uh, anger is necessarily a bad thing. In fact, the fact that you are angry means that you're starting to realize what actually happened. Uh, and that's a much better position to be than to be, you know, in uh, missing the narcissist or missing the borderline or, you know, trying to understand what happened or being confused. You know, if you're angry, it means you have started to recognize that, you know, this person has hurt you. And your anger and your rage is basically a, a defense mechanism. Um, so it's uh, for me, it, I don't see it as a bad thing at all. Actually, you know, I think it's a, it's a very good thing that you're angry. It means that you're starting to get back your dignity, basically. It's also important to say that anger is a very powerful emotion and if it is used for the right things it can be a, a positive thing you know i mean anger can give you uh, inhuman strength you know which you can use when you're training for instance you know it can give you motivation to do something it can give you motivation to change your life you know uh, so i i think uh, first reflection is that you know yeah, anger is not a pleasant emotion, but it's a very, very important one. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a positive emotion, you know, even if it's not pleasant, you know. Okay, the second point is that uh, if you have been in a relationship with a borderline and a narcissist, it's very likely that you have a tendency to repress your own emotions. And that's simply because, you know, there's no other way that you can be in a, with a borderline or a narcissist. You know, if you're a person that is very emotional, together with another borderline or a narcissist, you know, it's uh, often not going to work. So uh, I think people that date borderlines and narcissists tend to be uh, very uh, giving people, also in terms of um, their own emotions, meaning that they don't give themselves enough space to feel uh, the emotions, to manifest the emotions that they feel, you know. So you kind of tend to repress your emotions and keep them inside. So that's why I think that uh, these feelings of anger are good because it means now you feel something, you know, now you're not afraid to kind of uh, fight back, you know, you're not afraid to recognize uh, the emotions that you're feeling, you're not afraid to recognize the abuse that you have endured for, you know, who knows, months or years or even longer, decades. Um, so it's a, it's definitely a positive thing also on this end uh, because uh, as a codependent or someone who dates a borderline or a narcissist, most often you don't give enough space to your own uh, emotions. The third point is that you uh, need to channel anger towards uh, the right things. Um, anger can be useful because it can help you basically uh, in important things. Uh, once you've broken up, such as keeping no contact, you know, and uh, one of the reasons I often um, managed in the past to keep uh, no contact was the feeling of anger. So I would uh, basically think back about all the abuse that I had endured and that would help me basically uh, maintain uh, no contact, basically. If I did not feel anger, then who knows, maybe I would have gone uh, back uh, uh, and I would have uh, reinitiated contact. In fact, actually, that's what happened. The first time that I broke up with uh, uh, my ex, uh, I was angry for uh, several months and we had no contact, you know. But over time, I started to basically, uh, you know, not be so angry, you know, and she would uh, keep contacting me, you know. And, uh, you know, they can be patient, you know, borderlines and narcissists will wait. They will wait until your anger is gone to reinitiate uh, contact, you know. So uh, it's important that, you know, uh, you're aware of that as well, you know. I mean, I remember my ex would say, you know, I hope uh, uh, your anger will... Um, will uh, uh, you will eventually stop being angry towards me you know and it's uh, and i told her you know look at it i mean uh, now it's not anger anymore it's just that i don't think uh, we're compatible you don't have the values that i'm looking for in a partner blah 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 but the first time that we broke up it was all about you know it was a lot about uh, anger and eventually it, it went away over time you know and then we reinitiate the contact, you know, so uh, it's important that you uh, use the anger to basically uh, uh, do the right thing, which is uh, uh, no contact, for instance. 
but then you also have to be able to convert that uh, uh, anger into some other emotion you know which is maybe just you know the realization that they're not the right person for you um so yeah, so it was very useful for me in, in the beginning because it helped me keep that no contact, you know, the feeling of disgust, you know, when she would uh, get in contact with me, you know, the feeling of disgust of thinking back of the things that happened, you know, and the anger that I would feel helped me basically not fall into the trap. Okay, and then the fourth point is uh, that yes, anger is uh, useful, but it's also important uh, not to dwell on it. And of course, uh, uh, I think if you are um, watching this video, probably you want to know how do I stop uh, dwelling on the anger. And to be quite frank, it's uh, just a thing about time, I believe. You know, it's uh, over time you will eventually get bored of being angry, to be quite frank. But then you can also do things to kind of stop uh, uh, feeling so angry and resentful towards this uh, person. But not because there's anything bad about feeling angry or resentful towards someone, you know, especially someone who abused you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's more that, you know, why do you have to be in this state forever? It's not productive to be in a state of anger for yourself, not for the other person. Who cares about the other person? It's more about uh, how can you uh, be in a better mental uh, state, basically. And uh, so what you need to do is, uh, uh, I think it's you need to stop uh, um, reflecting on the things that happened so yes it's important to you know have this list that i'd often talk about about the abuse that you endured you know and it's important to go back on that list when you're missing them and so on but also don't you know don't read it 24/7 uh, all the time all the day you know don't obsess over it you know because otherwise you will never really get free of this uh, anger and uh, um, another risky thing is that uh, anger uh, also gives you this kind of a uh, it gives you this, uh, you know, serotonin boost because, you know, it gives you validation. When you feel angry, you feel validated, you know, you feel reassured that you did the right decision, you know. And yes, and it's great that you feel these emotions, you know, but at the same time, you're just harming yourself because you are uh, keeping this person in your mind uh, for no reason, you know. So that's why I say it's important to uh, basically uh, give yourself some space to deal with these emotions, you know, but don't allow yourself to spend your entire day thinking about the bad things that happened, you know, otherwise you will never leave uh, this anger state. And the, the most important thing is that, you know, you should leave this anger state not for them, but for yourself, 